Hey everybody, I'm John Rourke, Editor-in-Chief of Phoenix Home and Garden Magazine. We're here at the Arizona Fine Art Expo, which runs uh, January through the end of March. And there are more than 120 artists working studios. Whether you are a fine art collector, you're just starting to dip your toe into the world of art, or just want to see artists working and see their work, this is the place to be. So right now we're here and we're talking with Scott Wallace. Hello, yeah. Scott. <laughs> and how I many years have you been uh, a, a part of the expo? A part of the expo? Yes. 17. Okay, wow, that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, I okay, because uh, this is the 19th, 19th year, year. right, uh -huh. exactly. And it is yeah. a, a juried uh, exhibit, so it you is. are invited to participate. Um, tell us a little, about, a little bit about your work. It's kind of impressionistic, is my impression, but I might not be, you're the expert, so tell us, yeah. tell us about it. Impressionism is what I do. Oh, okay, yeah, I got that yeah. right. Uh, a modern take on it a little bit, okay. from what you would have thought with the French, but uh, the basic idea behind Impressionism is you can kind of tell what it is from a distance, and then when you get up close, it becomes just little piles of color and, and different shapes and so forth that don't mean a lot right there back Until up and they become yeah, yeah, some exactly. of the cacti. And well, and I was noticing like right over here, and you yeah. might not be able to see where you're at, Matt, but the, the just the texture and the, right. is that brush strokes? Do you use a paintbrush? Do you use a palette knife? What do you? I use both. Okay. Um, this one is primarily uh, with a brush, but where, where it gets a little heavier, especially like in the, in the reflection coming off of the sun, you can see a, a lot of uh, texture to the paint. Some up, even up in the clouds uh, was applied with a knife and then, then manipulated a little bit with a brush. And where are you from? Where do you live? I'm, I'm from Ogden, Utah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there are plenty of good nature out there to be yeah. seen. A little different than this. A little bit different. <laughs> right, right. And so what about, what, what inspires you about the southwestern landscape? Well, you, excuse me, but the uh, <laughs> sunsets are amazing yeah, around amazing. here. I mean, we'll get some beautiful sunsets over the Great Salt Lake, but not day to day like they yeah like they're they very technical here. around here uh -huh. yeah yeah exactly. so so that that's just really fun to come down here every year and with us, several of us will go out sometimes in the late afternoons and, and either paint or take photos or whatever and the case do you prefer be. to just do it live do you work from photographs is it a combination I do of both, both? okay mm -hmm. when you when you go out you get a little bit of a feel it has to work very fast this doesn't last very long right so, so you don't spend a whole lot of time in any kind of intricate detail but you do look for the matching the color and and the feel that you get when you're and that's that's a very important point is the the feeling of it if, if you if you were to just create i don't think you could create something like this with this depth if you were just looking at a photograph and you had not actually been no there. we've all taken photographs of sunsets and gotten them back and said that's oh. not what i remember <laughs> yeah yeah exactly and so my job so to speak is to try to recreate that feeling even if it doesn't match okay things 100 percent you, you get that feeling of the light going away and going away and almost gone exactly and the real power right in the center up through this but as you tail off the colors get softer and so forth okay well, let's take a look at some of your yeah. other works that's and then are you going to be working uh, I will during this, the expo? this will be my uh, okay. area right here uh, my palette will sit up there and I will get it ready to paint tomorrow uh, uh, with the colors and so forth so this is this is where I put the current ones that I'm working on. This is a uh, still life that I'm in the process with. Okay. Um, and um, and are you are you working from a photo on that one? On on this particular one, I set the actual still life up and, and got it to this point. I do have a photo of it in case okay. I need to refer back, but for the most part, I'll finish it out of my head now. And is that the Eiffel Tower I see in the background yeah. over there? <laughs> that was it. <a laughs> <laughs> <And, laughs> Very good. <laughs> <laughs> and then what, what what is it like to be creating with people walking around, people do you, are you first you, few years that I did it to be honest with you, I, I sort of hid. Right. You know, it was kinda like, oh and and when they're here I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> what if I make a mistake or something while they're watching? But as time goes on now it's kinda like, oh Hi. <laughs> oh, hi. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, could, art can be, I mean, art, so many artists work in the solitude of a studio right. where everything is controlled. So I would think it would be interesting to have yeah. that kind of element. That's just after 17 years of being here, I've gotten yeah. used to painting. Yeah, you got it now. People okay. watching. So mm -hmm. talk about some of these, these other pieces. This is more like home. 
Okay, sure. Okay, and uh, if you're from the Midwest, they always ask me if they're birch trees. If you're from Colorado, you so tell the last of their aspens. Okay. And, yeah, they're and, actually aspens, but okay. they can be birch if, <laughs> if, <that's what, laughs> if that's what the people see. Right. Uh, and so this this is just from a grove, probably within uh, 30 minutes of where I live. Oh, beautiful. Okay. And uh, yeah, I, I, I painted there several times. This was from a photograph I took there. Usually when they're this big, I've I've dealt with photographs. This is so tough to. What's the biggest that you do? You prefer large format or small format? I kind of prefer large. Okay. You know, uh, but as making your living at it, you do all sizes. Right. Exactly. So, what kind of um, what kind of clients are attracted to your work? You know, I, I get um, what's nice about this show is that they come from all over. Mm -hmm. But interestingly enough, I, I kind of chuckle when I see somebody walk in that says, whoa, really like, you know, you know you've got somebody that really likes your work, whether they're a buyer or not, it's a different thing. They'll usually be from Chicago. Chicago? It's surprising. <laughs> Why? I, do, I have no That's idea. That's so interesting. I used to, years ago <laughs> at the beginning, see a lot more from the East Coast. I don't know whether less or traveling here now. Uh, Everybody comes here be. in the winter from everywhere. But, so, and if I was I, in Chicago, I'd much prefer a winter out oh, here. Yeah. <laughs> Chicago winter. So I can usually figure it's going to be Chicago or the, uh, the East Coast really appeals. Although over the years now, I've sold to people from every state and yeah. even a few other countries. But interesting. That seems to be what I've found kind of interesting. Okay. We've got a piece here. Uh, uh, this next one over and and I want to take a look at that because from where I'm standing right here it is definitely impressionistic I see yes. so much texture I'm thinking that there is some sort of and a water type thing exactly um, let, talk about this piece this this particular painting was inspired by uh, a trip and a photo that I took over there in uh, France okay at, at uh, Monet's gardens so it's just one of the little corners that's kind of a, an impressionist Mecca of sorts. Sure. You know? oh my God. I can't imagine seeing that in, in person. <laughs> so you actually get to stand in the places where where Monet actually built and painted. The interesting thing behind the story there is that the gardens pretty much fell into uh, disarray. Really? And, but after World War II, some of the very wealthy Americans, the uh, uh, Rockefellers and such, went over and uh, restored the gardens. And uh, so there's a big American art museum there in, in the uh, in the village. But the, the lily ponds are iconic. You know? right. I think I've got a close-up around the corner here of just of just the pads and the different okay. the various colors. But this all comes from from Monet's garden. And do you have a favorite subject matter or do you like is it all over the board? You just like to um, that's a good question. <laughs> I, I, it's a little all over the board, as okay. you can see, if you, right. take, if you take a look. But uh, uh, currently, I, I just sold a piece that was uh, of a basilica in Venice. And lately, that's the Venice and Tuscan area has been a place where I've spent okay. more time, you know. And This is also yours down here? Yes. This is exquisite. The, this... Um, Piece is right there on the trail of Pinnacle Peak, just up the hill where the really? where the hike is. And I went there early morning before the, the show started last year, and uh, painted that before just as the sun rises. You know happening. what? That almost from farther away, it almost has kind of a Maxfield Parish quality about oh, the that's light. An, I appreciate which, that. Uh, well, I, I always hesitate <laughs> to suggest artists to other artists, but when we were standing farther back and with the frame that you've got, it it it. it yeah, it's just, yeah. just really yeah. beautiful. To be compared in any way to Maxfield <laughs> Parish is a, is a compliment. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, so we're, uh, again, uh, we're here with Scott Wallace and uh, at the Arizona Fine Art Expo. Swing by every day from uh, uh, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. It is open. You can get tickets online and uh, see plenty of finished artwork, uh, works in progress, and meet great great guys like Scott and uh, see, how, see how, he, how he does his work.